Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to light and render your animation shots in a very very basic way just to make them look good for your demo reel. So what you see in most demo reels, especially for beginners, is the, the play blast version of the shot with a gray background, which is really fine. Most producers and animators and industry professionals know how to understand if the animation is good or not just based on the play blast. They, they don't need to see fancy rendered uh, shots to know if the animation is good. But it's always more fun to watch stuff when they look nice. And that's why I decided to make this tutorial to help the uh, technically limited animators out there who don't want to deal with all the technical stuff of lighting and rendering have a better looking reel. So I'm going to show you how to export a nice render out of Maya and then composite it in After Effects or Nuke. I'm going to show both ways. I'm not going to explain the technical things that I'm doing because obviously you're not interested in that. Otherwise, you would learn how to do it. I'm just going to take you through all the settings you need to have on and all the way to the final result, which should look something like this. Yeah, that's a lot nicer than the Play Blast. So let's look at our scene in Maya. Uh, this is an animation I made a while ago after graduation. You want to turn on Mental Ray. And let's just go tab by tab and I'll show you what needs to be on. Uh, enable color management is good. I would use OpenEXR as the file format. Use this frame animation extension with uh, four frame padding. You can give it a name on the version label. Set up your timeline range. Choose the camera you want to export. The resolution, uh, HD 720 is, is enough. Uh, I don't think you should, you need to use 1080. And disable the default, enable uh, default light settings over here. Usually on default, it'll be on, just disable it. Under passes, um, you need to create a new render layer under the render tab in the channel box. Just uh, select all the stuff in your scene that you want to include in the, in the, in your passes and press create layer from selected. I've already done that and create a new layer called default render layer. In here under passes, you, you need to add a few passes. Adding a pass is as simple as clicking on it and pressing create. I've already chosen the three ones you need to create, which is beauty, depth remapped, and M2D toxic. Forget about what they mean right now, just know that you need to connect them. But adding them here is not enough, you need to actually select all of them while selecting your default render layer and pressing this uh, associate set that passes button. Now they're associated with this render layer. All right, next. Features is fine, forget about it. Quality. Under quality, um, you can set the, the quality preset to production. That's usually fine. Under indirect lighting, Make sure final gathering is on. The default settings are fine for this. And what I use is called physical sun and sky. That creates a default uh, sun lighting, which is usually pretty good for, uh, for basic renderings. I've already created it. Otherwise, you would have seen a create button. Now you see a delete button. And it's pretty much good as is. You can play around with the settings a little bit by pressing the button here and then changing like colors, sun direction, stuff like that. But if you don't want to tinker with it, it's still fine. Just make sure one thing, uh, make sure use background is on. It's not going to be on as a default. And if you don't select this, it's going to use its default uh, background, which is like a sunset background, which you, you don't want. You, you want to add your own background later. All right, so let's see how it looks right out of the box. The black background is alpha, it's, it's transparent, so we're going to be able to put a background behind it later. All right, now all you have to do is go to render and click on batch render. I've already done that, uh, so I'm not going to press it now. Once you do that, it's going to start rendering the images to your default images folder. 
All right, that's all you have to do in Maya. Let's start with compositing in After Effects so it's simpler. Depth maps or uh, motion blur. So this is our EXR sequence, which we've imported by pressing import file and then selecting our, uh, our sequence. Make sure sequence is on. I then dragged it into creating a new composition. It's going to look a little weird at first, but we need to add some effects to it. The main effect you want to add is extractor. That's going to extract the uh, RGB layer out of the EXR sequence. Then you want to add a background. I just uh, got like a diner photo from Google. Maybe not that one. Let's use this one. Add some blur to the background. Make sure you press on multiply. It's going to get rid of that black line you see around the, the character. Now, if you have a plugin for a light wrap, that's always good. Select the background as uh, the background layer, and it adds like a nice, uh, nice wrap using the colors from the background. Just very subtle effect. Now you can add a curve effect just to play with the color a little bit. And that's it. It's not amazing, but it looks much better than the Play Blast, I think. Now you just need to export it by adding to the render queue. I change it to H264. It's a little uh, lighter. And then you press render. And here is the result again. All right, we're going to switch over to Nuke. It's going to be a little more complicated, but not really. I'm going to assume you know how to use Nuke just a little bit, so I'm not going to explain the very, very basic uh, stuff. What you need to do is bring in the EXR image sequence uh, twice. One of them is only for uh, the depth map, which we're going to deal with a little later. After reading that in, you can color correct it to make it a little, uh, make the colors look a little better. Then you use the copy node and you want to copy from A, which is the depth pass, who will be shuffled through the shuffle node and selecting camera Z depth remapped. So you want to copy that into um, our main sequence. Now you got to make sure in the copy node that we're copying from the camera Z uh, depth remap channel into a channel called depth z okay just just make sure it looks like this then we apply the z blur uh, filter and take and under z make sure you select depth z now you can play with the uh, depth of a field the green is where it's where it's going to be in focus The next thing is adding our motion blur. Let's go to a place where we have, we actually have motion here when he, he throws the ball in the air. The only thing you need to make sure under vector blur is that the UV channels are the MV2, MV2D toxic uh, pass that we've rendered from Maya. And that the method is forward, not backward. It's default, it's gonna be backward, just change it. Then, you can see that if we increase the multiply, it's going to take a little while to load. As we increase the multiply, uh, wherever there is motion, we're going to see uh, more blur. So I think that amount is enough. Um, on the other side here, I got our little background diner background. You need to reformat it with a reformat node to make sure it's uh, 720 
as well otherwise it'll be too large and then we add a little blur on it and using a merge node we merge the two together while adding a little light wrap on the main character and that's it you create a right node make sure you write a tiff sequence save it wherever you want render it and then bring it into after effects again and just just render it from after effects as a sequence you don't have to do anything and what's nice about this one is that you get that little motion blur Alright guys, that said, if you want to learn more about how to make a better demo reel, check out our post on demo reel guidelines. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe.